everyone. Hi, it's me again. So glad you could join me. In this segment, I will be covering the Affordable Care Act, or ACA, and the payment section of the Form 1040 tax return, specifically lines 11B of the 1040 return, which is line 47 from the Schedule C, which deals with excess advanced premium tax credit repayment, Form 1040, line 14, which is line 64 from Schedule 4, which deals with the health care individual responsibility, and lines uh, 15 through 22 of the Form 1040. Now, I hope that didn't blow your mind too bad, but all will become clear by the end of the segment. So, let's just jump right in with showing you the Form 1040, page 2, along with the different schedules. So from line 10 down to the end of the return is what I'll be talking about today. Schedule 2, line 45, is not our VITA client. Line 46, though, is, represents the excess advanced premium tax credit repayment, which I'll talk to you about in a moment. Line 47, is the total line, which is then carried to Form 1040, line 11. Taking a look at Schedule 4, line 57, represents our total self-employment tax that we've already covered in our business income section. Line 59 represents the additional tax on IRAs, other qualified retirement plans, that we've already covered. Line 60, once again, is not our VITA client. Line 61 is our healthcare individual responsibility, which I'll be going over in this segment. It's a part of the ACA laws and rules. Line 62 and 63 is not our VITA client. Line 64 now represents the total of Schedule 4 which is then carried to line 14 of the Form 1040. ACA's information is located in Publication 4012, pages H5 through H32. Now, when we look at Part 6 of the 13614C, the Intake to Interview and Quality Review Form, it references health care coverage. If the taxpayer has answered yes to any of the questions, then you as the tax preparer will need to be making some notes in the darkly shaded area just below the questions. You will need to document whether or not the taxpayer, spouse, and dependents held, had, had health insurance coverage all year, part of the year, or whether they were even entitled to an exemption from the health care coverage. The ACA law states that everyone should be covered by health care coverage, unless specifically exempt from coverage. For this segment, pay particular attention to line item number three, which specifically deals with the advanced premium tax credit payments. If the taxpayer responds yes to 3A, the taxpayer should be providing you with the Form 1095-A received from the marketplace or the exchange, as some like to call it. Taxpayers should also be responding to the other two questions, question 3A and 3B. However, if the taxpayer responds yes to 3A, big A, and 3 little a, the taxpayer has advanced premium tax credit issues, which calls for some attention. Okay, so let me see if I can paint you a picture here, the oversimplified version. Suppose Jane contacted the marketplace or the healthcare exchange for healthcare insurance in January. Suppose the marketplace quoted Jane's insurance premiums as hmm, $200 a month. Jane tells the marketplace 
that she can't afford to pay the $200 a month. But she can afford, based upon her financial situation at the time, afford to pay $140 a month. So the marketplace searches around and comes back to say, Jane, the marketplace can help you pay the outstanding monthly premium of $60 a month. Jane says, okay, then let's work with that. By the end of the year, the marketplace or the exchange has paid $720 on Jane's behalf. The $720 represents advanced premium payment that Jane has benefited from. On Jane's Form 1095A, that $720 will be reflected and is taken into account when completing Form 8962, Part 2 Reconciliation Form. It could be that Jane has to repay some or all or more than the advanced premium payment benefit based upon her income at the end of the year. If Jane's income situation changes during the year, say she got a better paying job or she received a raise on the job she has, she should return to the marketplace to declare the change. If she doesn't, chances are the marketplace will have paid too much of the advanced premiums on Jane's behalf, giving her too much of an advanced premium benefit or credit. If there is an excess or too much advanced premium tax credit, Jane will have to pay back the excess known as excess advanced premium tax credit repayment. If the taxpayer received an excess premium tax credit payment, the appropriate amount shown from form 8962 will transfer to schedule two, line 46. The box on line 11B of the form 1040 will automatically be checked and the total amount from schedule two will be added to the Form 1040, line 11. We've already arrived at a federal income tax on line 11A of the Form 1040. Now the excess advanced premium tax credit repayment now gets added to line 11A. Now, allow me to flip this just a little bit. Suppose Jane had overstated her income level in January when she went to the marketplace for insurance, health insurance. However, by year's end, her actual income was less than what she originally told the marketplace in January. The marketplace would have paid a lesser advanced premium tax credit amount. Since Jane's income is less, she was actually entitled to receive more advanced uh, premium tax credit than she actually received. Because of this, she's entitled to a refund of that difference in the form of a net advanced premium tax credit. This net amount is real money in the pocket. Once again, we'll return to form 8962 and it works all that out after inputting the information from the Form 1095A data. The net advanced premium tax credit drops into the payment section of the Form 1040 to increase the refund or help to reduce the balance due. Everything I've just talked about is called reconciliation of the advanced premium tax credit. Let me show you the Form 1095A Health Insurance Marketplace Statement and the Form 8962 Premium Tax Credit. This is the Form 1095A, the VITA Tax Preparer, 
should be asking for if the taxpayer purchased health insurance coverage from the marketplace. Part one is recipient information. Part two are the covered individuals under the health insurance plan. Part three represents the premiums paid as well as the advanced premium tax amounts. Notice columns A, B, and C. These are the amounts that will be entered on the form 8962 to determine if there were excess advanced premium credit, which the taxpayer will need to repay, or if there was a net premium credit, which entitles the taxpayer to a refund. Here is the form 8962 premium tax credit. Part two of the form deals with the reconciliation of the advance premium tax credit. You can see highlighted references to the form 1095A and its columns. Column A's information on the form 8962 is from column A, 1095A marketplace lines 21 through 32. Column B's information on the Form 8962 comes from the Form 1095A, lines 21 through 32, Column B. Column C is an automatic entry, as is D and E on the Form 8962. However, Column F sends us back to the Form 1095A, lines 21 through 32, Column C. Lines 24 through 26 calculates the net premium tax credit. This is the premium tax credit refund amount, and it will be shown in the payment section on Schedule 5 of the Form 1040. We'll see that later in this lesson. Lines 27 through 29 calculates the repayment of the excess advanced premium uh, payment of the premium tax credit. This excess, once again, results in the form of additional taxes. Premium tax credit only comes into play when the taxpayer purchases health insurance coverage from the marketplace. Once again, this information is found in publication 4012, pages H five through H32. Now, line 61 is our healthcare individual responsibility. This line deals with healthcare coverage in general. Allow me to generalize here once again. The law says that everyone is to be covered by some form of minimal essential coverage for the entire year. If the taxpayer did not have minimum essential coverage all year, or the taxpayer did not have an exemption from the health care coverage, then the taxpayer may be liable for what is termed individual responsibility in the form of additional tax on line 61. Once again, Feel free to use the dark shaded area just below the questions on the form 13614C to identify who on the taxpayer's return had or did not have health care coverage. Minimum essential coverage comes in many forms. Minimum essential coverage is defined for you in the publication 4012, page H-6. Recall from the form 13614C, part six, if the taxpayer answers yes to question one, that's great. If they answered yes to number two, then the taxpayer should have with them a form 1095B or the form 1095C. These represent employer offered 
health insurance plans. Okay, so now we've already discussed item number three, which dealt with the premium tax credit. But number four speaks to an exemption granted by the marketplace. If the taxpayer has been granted an exemption from the marketplace, the taxpayer will have a letter with the taxpayer exemption code as well as the year of the exemption. So if the taxpayer says that the marketplace granted them an exemption, you will need to see the letter with the codes, the year the code is for, as well as who on the tax return this code is for. The bottom of page H-15 in publication 4012, you will see additional exemptions granted by the marketplace. Now, the marketplace isn't the only ones who grants exemptions from the health insurance coverage. The IRS has some exemption codes as well. Those exemption codes are also found on page H-15. FIDA sites typically see codes A through G uh, in terms of coverage exemptions. Allow me to provide you a short synopsis of the uh, exemption codes which affect our VITA clients. Code A, insurance is unaffordable. The insurance, health insurance that is, is 8.05% of household income. Code B covers a short coverage gap. That is, the taxpayer is without coverage for less than three consecutive months during the year. That again is health insurance coverage. Code C, these are our citizens living abroad as well as certain non-citizens. So you have to read that very carefully. Code D are members of the healthcare sharing ministry. Code E, members of an Indian tribe. Code F, are taxpayers who were in jail or prison or in the penal institution. That is an exemption from coverage. Code G, are residents of a state that did not expand Medicare, or Medicaid. For us in Texas, that would be our state. Once again, publication 4012, page H-15 through H-32, provides full-blown explanations, hardship exemptions granted by the marketplace, and tax layer screenshots. Look there for additional help. Healthcare coverage exemptions are shown on the form 8965. All exemption codes are entered on the Form 8965 Health Insurance Exemptions. Part 1 of that form references the marketplace, granted coverage exemptions for individuals. As you can see, you would list the name of the individual, their social security number, and the marketplace exemption code from the marketplace letter are from the bottom of the page H-15 of publication 4012. Part two references the threshold, or references below the threshold household income levels. Tax Slayer Pro Online would have already checked that box if it applies. Part three references coverage exemptions from uh, the IRS exemption table on pages H-15. Tax preparers will complete this part if the taxpayer and or members of their household is claiming an exemption from coverage using the IRS exemption codes. Tax preparers list the individual's name, the social security number, the applicable exemption code, and the number of months each individual was exempt. If the individual is not exempt for the entire year, the taxpayer would be assessed an individual responsibility payment in the form of the additional tax on Schedule 4, Line 61. See how we wrap that all back together? 
TaxSlayer Pro Online calculates the amount of the individual responsibility payment and plops it on form or on line 61 of Schedule 4 to be transferred to Form 1040 tax return. I have really oversimplify the Affordable Care Act and ACA segment. There's plenty more in Publication 4012, Section H, with loads of examples, screenshots, as well as explanations. Go there for help. So here again is the Form 1040 and Schedule 4. Line 11 is tax. Line 12 is the deduction for child tax credit and other non-refundable credits from Schedule 3. Line, line 13, we're subtracting line 12 from 11. Line 14 represents other taxes from Schedule 4. And finally, line 15 represents total tax liability. This is the total federal income taxes due on a tax return. Let's move on now to the payment section. See how we're going to cover those taxes. Line 16 represents an accumulation of all the federal tax withheld figures that's already been input into the software. Line 17 are our refundable credits. We've already talked about some of those. Line 17A represents the earned income credit. Information regarding the earned income credit is located in Publication 4012, Tab I. Earned income credit, of course, is tied to earned income, right? Right. It is not tied to unearned income. Tax Slayer figures that amount for us automatically, so we don't have to stress about that. Publication 4012, page I-1, covers what is earned income and what is not. Below that are some common errors taxpayers make in attempting to claim this credit. Page I-2 is a summary of earned income credit eligibility requirements. Part A covers the rules for everyone. Part B are the rules if you have a qualifying child. Part C are the rules if you don't have a qualifying child. And Part D covers the limitation of earned and adjusted gross income. There are decision trees which references each part of the earned income credit requirements, beginning on page I-3 through I-6. Don't skip over the notes at the bottom. Once again, this credit is automatically calculated by TaxSlayer Pro Online based upon the information that's already been entered. Line 17B represents the refundable part of the child tax credit called additional child tax credit. Publication 4012, page G-12, provides us with general eligibility rules. Let me provide a brief run-through right now. Certain taxpayers may be entitled to a refundable additional child tax credit. Taxpayers with more than $2,500 of taxable income may be eligible for the additional child tax credit if they have at least one qualifying child. Taxpayers with three or more children may also be eligible for the additional child tax credit, regardless of their income. Limited to $1,400 per qualifying child. Schedule 8812 additional child tax credit form is used to calculate the allowable additional child tax credit and is figured automatically via the TaxLayer Pro online software. Line 17 is the refundable part of the American Opportunity Credit. 
That is the education credit that we've already spoken about. And the last part of line 17 is asking for any amounts from Schedule 5 Form 1040 return. Schedule 5 for our VITA clients can include estimated tax payments made in the current year as well as payments applied from a previous year. Also, Schedule 5 includes the net premium tax credit amount from the ACA lesson we talked about earlier. Line 18 represents the total of line 17. Line 19, if line 18 is more than line 15, the taxpayer has a refund or an overpayment. The taxpayer has a couple of choices here. They can choose to have a paper check sent to their physical address that takes about six to eight weeks, or they can choose to have direct deposits which drops into their bank account in approximately three weeks. For direct deposit, the taxpayer will need to indicate whether their refund should go to their savings or to their checking account. The taxpayer will need to show the tax preparer the routing number and the account number. The taxpayer has a few more options as well, but I'll let you read that on your own. That is located in Publication 4012, Tab K. Ah, I'm done. Stick a fork in me. Remember, Maury? M, mirror the paper document into the software. A, all electronically submitted returns are submitted through the TaxSlayer Pro online software. U, use the Publication 4012 and 4491, they are your friend. R, read all the applicable notes on the page. I, interview the taxpayer using their completed form 13614C. I just made that acronym up, y'all. Drop the mic. I do appreciate you visiting with me throughout these segments of learning. I hope you've learned something that you can use along the way during this filing season. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. <music>